Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gamer Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. I'm going to start things out with NVIDIA slash TSMC news. And there has been a report from the website EX Preview, which would appear to be very bad news indeed for NVIDIA and both Turing and Pascal, which could potentially lead to GPU shortages. So what's going on here? Well, according to the website EX Preview, there have been impurities discovered in the, chem in the chemicals which are required to manufacture the wafers which the uh, NVIDIA Turing slash Pascal GPUs are based on, which is the 12 slash 16 NM wafers. Now, according to the uh, reports, it would appear that the contamination has only been observed thus far of Fabrication 14, which is taking place at Nankai Technology Park and does not look like it has spread past this. So far, it looks like that this uh, issue is going to cost around 85 million US dollars. However, it is less clear exactly what is going to happen in terms of shortages or if it's going to be any shortages with NVIDIA GPUs. Once again, it is the 16 and 12 NM process, and of course the 12 NM process is used for Turing. This could actually impact uh, the GTX 16 series, which of course is based on the Turing architecture and the 12 NM process. So shortages for this card could be really bad news for Nvidia, but great news for AMD. Why? Well, obviously the 16 series of cards, such as the GTX 1660 Ti, look on paper at least, to be relatively impressive in terms of performance. But the key thing NVIDIA, of course, are uh, basing the uh, release of these cards on is pricing. So if we have shortages, it's possible that retailers could decide to do some price gouging, which would basically eliminate the value of these products. It's very early, however, to speculate whether this is going to be the case or not. So let's really hope it's not for not just NVIDIA's sake, but our own. Fortunately, AMD are, of course, releasing the Radeon 7 cards. And from the, what news we're hearing so far, various AIBs are indeed going to be releasing uh, GPUs of their own on the Radeon 7 architecture. But what's less clear is the numbers of cards we're going to be seeing for Radeon 7. But either way, with any luck indeed, we will not see a shortage of cards. And if so, it's going to just be a blip of maybe a couple of weeks or so at most. And while we're on the subject of the GTX 16 series of cards, there have been numerous models that have been discovered on the EEC website from the well-known Twitter user Kamichi. Now, I won't list all of the models here because I'll be here for way too long, but various MSI cards, including the GTX 1660 Ti Gaming Z, Armor, and we also see a Gaming X variant, all of the GTX 1660 Ti variety, and also quite a number of Gigabyte cards as well. We see um, cards which, of course, will include the Aorus, Gaming and Windforce, and most likely even a Mini ITX card. So this is really good news for the release of the GPUs, which once again is expected to take place next uh, next month. And from what we can gather from the performance of the GPUs, they're going to be pretty impressive indeed and will definitely be a good replacement for the rather aging now GTX 1060. There's also an interesting report floating around right now on the internets, which originated from the website DigiTimes. Now this information is not quite what I've heard from one of my sources, but I'm going to report it anyway because it's interesting. Now, according to earlier reports, and Gamers Nexus were one of the first to break this, AMD were not going to be tasking the PCH design and creation to as media as they had in the past. Instead, they were going to design the PCH in-house. But according to what murmurs have started to uh, come from, uh, as media themselves, along with sources who have spoken to DigiTimes, it could be that AMD indeed do stick with as media in the long term. I'm going to read this out from Baton from DigiTimes. Taiwan's as media technology is expected to land a contract design orders for all mainstream PCIe chips from AMD, even after the US chipmaker rolls out X570 motherboard chipset that support PCIe 4.0 in mid 2019. Although as media will not complete tape out for relevant solutions until the end of the year. 
as media has been contracted to supply X370 and 470 motherboard PCH, which is standing for Platform Control Hub, with the partnership expected to extend to the X500 series boards, although AMD has designed X570 motherboard PCHs on its own. From the reports over at Gamers Nexus, they were told that the B550 boards could launch around one quarter after the X570, so possibly we could be seeing that as one of the answers here. Maybe AMD will just launch the uh, X570 on PCIe 4 and maybe the B550 will stick on PCIe 3.0. There are some conflicting uh, pieces of information there. So unfortunately, all we can wait all we can do is wait and see, although that would be rather baffling for them to make that decision, particularly given that, say, the X470, uh, in many cases, can indeed run PCIe 4.0. And I say in many cases because, as we've explained previously, it does depend upon the layout of the motherboard as well as the manufacturer. Essentially, the trace length of the uh, PCIe slot that connects directly to the CPU needs to be under, I believe it's six inches. If it's any longer than that, because the signal, the electrical signal will degrade and because PCIe 4.0 wasn't uh, implemented natively in these boards and they don't have the components to basically boost the signal, you will get signal degradation, which means really bad things when you plug a device in. In other words, it crashes. So if a board uh, does not meet those criteria, then you will basically not see a motherboard update for your respective board, or rather a BIOS update for your respective board. I've also been fed a small piece of exclusive information, or a couple of pieces of exclusive information as well, from one of my sources that has been rather reliable in the past. I'm going to read this out verbatim because, once again, I do not wish to misquote. The launch schedule of the X570 is targeting Computex 2019, but motherboard shipment will be in early Q3. The most critical difference between X570 and X470 is the 570 supports PCIe Gen 4, and there's also an increase in power consumption compared to the X470. Now, this power consumption difference has actually been reported as well by Gamers Nexus. So it would appear, assuming his source is different to mine, and it probably is with all the different sources of the industry, that there are, without any question, uh, that we know, at least, without any question, excuse me, that the 500 series boards do actually require slightly higher power than what the 400 series boards do. Now, we're not, of course, talking a difference of like, you know, 100 watts. And obviously, if your power supply is up to the task with the 400 series boards, it's not going to be the motherboard which pushes you over. It's going to be the CPU. Although I say that without knowing the power requirements of the CPU. And from what my source has told me, as long with what AMD have said and other whispers in the industry, TDP and power consumption should be roughly the same between Ryzen 2000 and Ryzen 3000. My my source did say, though, that one of the challenges that motherboard vendors are apparently facing is that better cooling solutions are going to be required for the motherboard itself. And some motherboard vendors apparently may have been caught somewhat with their pants down here because with the additional power consumption plus other changes in the architecture of the board, basically they can produce more heat. He has not said it's going to be a huge issue and certainly doesn't expect like the boards to explode or anything like that. But he is saying that it ha has caused some of the motherboard vendors to be like, oh, okay, well, we kind of need to slightly beef that up. I've also been told through a couple of sources, the Bauer as well as hinted this in a live stream, along with a couple of other websites as well, that the 500 series boards allegedly are going to be built with uh, some models anyway, capable of supporting much higher clock speeds and possibly more robust overclocking compared to the 400 series boards. It's not quite clear though on exactly how well they overclock because obviously if you say, well, more robust overclocking, it doesn't necessarily, it's all relative. So, you know, you could have a extreme overclock of a processor that's like a couple of hundred megahertz because that processor is already in terms of architecture really close to what it's capable of when they released it or you can have like a solo on 300a and thumbs up if you get that reference
And now we're going to discuss ray tracing. No, not from NVIDIA and not from AMD, but from Intel themselves. Apparently, Intel are a big believer in ray tracing for the long term, according to Roger Chandler. Intel are hoping its game development program uh, will be a step in the direction of ray tracing and has said that as Intel rapidly evolves CPU and GPU and platform technologies, developers will find it easier to unleash all of that computer power. And this was explained by Chandler in a GDC Q&A. He also went on to explain that CPUs and accelerator-driven client-side AI will improve the believability of game NPCs and help coach players to become better esports competitors. Ray tracing is not just for shiny reflections and for light to bounce around in the scene really well, but ray tracing can be used for a lot more, including artificial intelligence and audio. And indeed, in a recent interview I had with NVIDIA, they were explaining a lot of the possible usage scenarios for ray tracing as well as the RT cores. And it would appear that Intel have a similar philosophy here. They will be using ray tracing to probably improve the realism and immersiveness of games. Either way, it's going to be fascinating how this technology actually evolves. We've all heard the rumors now that the next generation of Xbox systems will also support ray tracing, which... Honestly, I hadn't exactly predicted, but I had said that I would not be surprised at all. After all, there is a reason that Microsoft were working on DXR, and I'm not saying that they are not having their fingers in the PC pie, but Microsoft have made it very clear, abundantly clear, that DirectX, Windows, and a lot of the stuff they're working on is not just for the PC or for the Xbox, it's for a user, for, it's for a unified, excuse me, I really can't speak today, it's for a unified platform. Microsoft are trying to simplify development uh, across both console and PC. And so for them to create DXR, there was a very good chance that, in theory anyway, DXR could be usable on the next generation of Xbox system. And we all know that from the rumors that that's going to be Navi based. So given Microsoft's uh, push for this, it's not surprising that Intel are uh, also going to be jumping on the on, on the bandwagon, along with, of course, NVIDIA, who are uh, trying to still push Turing, and AMD, who we can presume, given the leaks, will also be supporting ray tracing with its upcoming Navi GPUs, or at the very least Arcturus. Anyway, I know this has been a bit of a shorter video than normal. However, I am still in the process of editing the all you need to know about the Ryzen 3000 series processor. I basically had to do a whole bunch of refilming today because of a couple of leaks and other bits and pieces I was told. So that's all done. Editing is being worked on and I'm also working on a couple of reviews. I'm going to be really honest with you all. Uh, my schedule has been a little bit uh, iffy the last week or so simply because uh, after I got back from the United States, I kind of was dealing with a breakup with a uh, with a girlfriend and it just, well, you know how it's like when you deal with that. So I've just been a little out of it last uh, couple of days, but my schedule is getting back to normal. I still will be traveling back to the United States at least once or twice this year, though, simply because I have so many friends over in the US. And uh, frankly speaking, I'm looking forward to going back because, well, I have had an amazing time every time I've been there. So with all of that said, I just wanted to keep you updated there just so you all know what's going on because I think that's fairest to you in that um, just so that you're all aware of it. And I also appreciate all of the support uh, from the subscribers and general interaction. It's been really awesome over the last few days. And once again, production will be returning to normal over the last few days. But with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, you can click the thumbs up button because that helps us out a ton. You can also find us on Patreon, Amazon affiliate links uh, down below. If you want to buy a new set of razors, then well, that helps us out a lot with the Amazon affiliate links. And you can also find us on uh, social media. So if you want to shoot us over a message, feel free to do so. But take care of yourselves. Bye for now.